Good evening. Peace of the Lord be with you all as we gather to worship tonight. I am Pastor Paul Pett. I'm pastor at Redeemer Lutheran in Green Bay. And it's a pleasure to be with you this evening and uh, worship with you and lead you in worship. Um, I want to kind of preview my message in the service tonight with a question. And I want you to think about it as we head toward the message. I want you to think about what person in your life I'm not talking about God, I'm not talking about Jesus, I'm talking about what, about what human being on this planet right now knows you the best. What human being in your life, what person knows you the best? Because I want you to think about that as we think about God's omniscience and all that He knows, and then we're going to go from there. So, um, dwell on that question as we're heading toward the message tonight. So uh, at our church, we take a moment to greet each other before we get going in worship. So I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing. So let's stand, greet one another, wish each other peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. 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 Evening. So we begin worship by joining in singing, Lord, I need you. comes my way and when I cannot stop Jesus you are my hope and stay when I count on you Jesus you are my hope and stay Lord I need you I'm 
sins, my righteousness. O Lord, how I need you. My righteousness, O oh God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, O oh God, how I need you. Let us stand. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. What shall I render to the Lord for all His benefits to me? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His people. O Lord, I am Your servant. I am Your servant, the son of Your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of His people. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. We pray together. Lord Jesus, as I face death, turn my thoughts to Your body broken for me and Your blood spilled for me. Let me rise as You have risen from the dead to walk with you forever in the land of the living. I call on your name, for you have promised to be with me. Amen. You may be seated for this scripture reading, the reading of the Passion History. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, also called the Passover, drew near. And Jesus said to his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man will be given over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the scribes assembled with the elders of the people in the palace of the high priest, who is called Caiaphas, and consulted how they might take Jesus craftily and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. For they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, one of the twelve. He went his way to the chief priests and captains and spoke together with them how he might betray Jesus to them. They were glad to hear him. He said to them, What will you give me to betray him to you? They promised to give him money and agreed with him for thirty pieces of silver. He accepted. And from that time... He sought opportunity to betray him in the absence of the multitude. Then came the first day of unleavened bread when they sacrificed the Passover lamb. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover that we may eat it. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He said to them, Go into the city, and when you have entered the city, watch for a man bearing a pitcher of water. When he meets you, follow him into the house where he enters. You shall say to the man who lives there, The master says to you, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house. Where is the room for me to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them. 
they came into the city and found it just as he had told them, and they made ready the Passover. When the hour was come, Jesus sat down and the apostles with him. As they were eating, he said, I have longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall not eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Truly I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in the kingdom of my Father. There was also strife among them as to which of them should be counted the greatest. He said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority over them are called benefactors. It shall not be so among you. He that is the greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that serves. For who is greater, he that sits at the table or he that serves? Is it not he that sits at the table? But I am among you as a servant. You are they who have continued in, with me in my temptations. I appoint you to a kingdom, as my Father has appointed me. You shall eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Jesus knew that his hour was come to depart from the world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. Already Satan had put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. He rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. He poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel with which he had gir was girded. When he came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not know now, but after these things you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has been bathed does not need to wash more than his feet, for he is clean altogether. You are clean, but not all of you. He knew who was to betray him. That was why he said not everyone was clean. So after he had washed their feet and taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me the Master and the Lord, and it is good that you say this, for so I am. If I then, your ma Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I have done this to show you the way to do as I done, have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I do not speak of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. The Scripture must be fulfilled, that he who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Already now I tell you of this, before it happens, so when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives anyone whom I shall send, receives me, and whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. When Jesus had said these things, his spirit was in turmoil. He bore witness and said, Truly, truly, I say to you that one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another dumbfounded about whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was leaning on Jesus' bosom. Simon Peter said to him, Ask who it is of whom he is speaking. 
and disciple was reclining in Jesus' chest and said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus then answered, It is the one to whom I shall give the piece of bread after I have dipped it. He dipped the piece of bread he had in his hand and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After the piece of bread had been dipped, Satan entered into that one. Jesus said to him, What you are doing, do quickly. No one at the table knew what the purpose was of what Jesus had said to him. Because Judas kept the money bag, some thought Jesus had told him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. When the man that received the piece of bread, he went out immediately and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and in him God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify him in himself and at once he will glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you. For this I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but afterwards you will follow me. We join in singing. Scarlet, Lord, I know, Lord, I know that I'm clean and forgiven through the power of your blood, the wonder of your love, the faith in you and I. White as snow. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May be seated as we sing, I lay my sins on Jesus. sins on Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. He bears them all and frees us from the accursed load. I bring my guilt to Jesus to wash my crimson stains, clean in His blood most precious 
till not a spot remains. My one Son, Jesus, wholeness dwells in Him. For diseases my soul He does redeem. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is the Gospel reading, and I'm going to read just a portion of that one more time. And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover of my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our souls. And as you know us, you know us inside and out. You know every step we take, every word we speak, every thought we have. And you love us. Help us. Help us to fully contemplate the fullness of that love. Contemplate the fact that you have this this incredibly deep knowledge of us better than we know ourselves. And to appreciate what you do to redeem us inside and out. In your name, amen. So I asked the question and I want you to answer it now. I want you to answer, who is that person in your life who knows you better than anyone else? Okay, I'm seeing a point at, is that, is that wife? Okay. How many else say spouse? Okay. Now, let's go from there. If you didn't raise your hand for spouse, how many say parent? Okay, we've got a couple of parents. How many say sibling? Okay, sibling. How many say um, teacher? Not seeing any teachers. How many say doctor? see any doctors. I want to put that in context. I don't know if Pastor Brewer shared this with you, but two years ago I had a kidney transplant. And in preparing for kidney transplant, they look at every part of your body to make sure that you can handle it. So I had tests for things. I didn't know there were tests for things. They were looking at every, every single spot on my body to make sure that I could physically handle the surgery and the recovery and all of that. I mean, they had uh, the cardiologist, they had the lung doctor, they had the, why this? But they had the dermatologist literally look at every piece of skin on my body. Talk about invasive. And and I want you to to think about, oh, I just dropped my mic. I just want you to think about that. And that's just the outside. But who knows the inside? Some said spouse, some said child, some said parent. But I left out God, didn't I? Think about 
what God knows. Starting to picture it? Every moment of your life prior to your conception, God knew you. Scriptures say that. Before you were born, I knew you. And, and then, as we came into this world, every move we made, every step we took, every thing we did, every thought we had, every thing that happened in our lives, God knew when. Before we did. And how does he still feel about us? Are you not sure? Yeah, exactly. He loves us unconditionally. You see, it's really important that we see in this passage of Scripture that God does know everything. And every plan that God has that He wants to carry out, it will be carried out. But He knows every step of all of us. You know, when you look at you know, this part of Scripture, you think, well, yeah, they're just getting the Passover ready. No big deal. But it is a big deal. Because he knew that Peter and John would do exactly the way he wanted things. He knew that this gentleman would be carrying this jar of water. Does anybody know why this is unique, by the way? In Jesus' day, who carried most of the water? The women did. Because the women, I guess they were the water carriers. But, in this particular situation, it was a man. And it was important. Because this is during the festival. And during the festival, how busy, how populated, how crowded was Jerusalem? Extremely crowded. Many more people in that area in that time than there normally would be. And so, to find something unique and find an individual that was doing something that would lead them directly to that spot was so necessary for Peter and John. But Jesus had it planned to the detail. But why was it so important that Jesus celebrate the Passover? Was it really important for us? Absolutely it was. Because the Passover was a command of God. God had told Moses, do this as a memorial every year. And so Jesus had to fulfill God's Word. Now, do you remember what we sang in that first song? Pastor Brewer, could you go back to that slide? The refrain. Oh, somebody's there. They're doing it magically. Oh, right, oh, right there. Lord, I need you. Oh, I say it with me. Need you every hour. I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. We're going to stop there. That's why. Jesus had to be perfect. That's what his righteousness was all about. That's what he had to do. He had to be absolutely perfect in every way, shape, and form so that he could come knowing us better than we know ourselves and cover every single one of our imperfections. Every single one of our sins. Every single one of our flaws. Every single one of of our failures, He covers. Knowing them and knowing them deeply, He covers them. He knew Judas was going to do what he did. And yet, 
He didn't throw them out three years earlier. For three years he knew. Before that he knew. And yet he chose him. Why? Because he still... Nobody? Still loved him. He still loved him. Even though he knew he was going to betray him. Even though he knew he was going to do what he's going to do. He still loved him. And that's for each and every one of us. But not only does he love us, but he has a plan for us. He has a plan for every step of our lives. He had a plan for just the celebration of the Passover that particular year. So you think he's got a plan for you? You think he's got a plan for your life? You think he's got a plan for your activity in his kingdom? Does he? Absolutely he does. Do we always get that? No. Sometimes we can pretty, be pretty dense about things. Pastor Carl, ever miss an opportunity? Me too. How about you guys? We all do it. Oh, man. I should have. I could have. Missed it, blew it. Doggone it. But he still loves us. He loves us to carry out that gift of forgiveness for each and every one of us every time we come to the table, every time we partake. See, the Passover was so important that year because he wanted to bring it full circle. Because remember, that Passover lamb had to be special. What was to be special about that Passover lamb? No blemish. No faults, no spots, not lame, not sick, perfect. And then it was to be slaughtered at twilight. Its blood was to be drained. The first time the blood was to be painted on the doorposts and lintel stones as a message to the angel of death to pass over that house to pass over those souls. But now, Jesus takes it to an individual step. I'm going to take this Passover, he says, and I'm going to make it individually. And I'm not going to make it just once a year. I'm going to make it so as often as you do this, you will do it in remembrance of me. As often as you do this, you will receive forgiveness of your sins. As often as you do this, I'm coming to touch you. To remind you that I love you. To remind you that you're important, that I'm giving you a mission, and you're part of my plan. To remind you that I'm always, always with you. And so we come. Jesus said, take, eat. This is my drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my... So that He is touching us. Has anyone ever told you of what is the best hug you will ever receive? Anybody? So when you come and take communion... He's embracing you with His body and He is washing you with His blood. He's filling you with His presence and sustaining you with all that He did to bring salvation to you and me. That's what the Passover was to lead to and came full circle for the disciples and for you and for me. 
His presence would be directly touching us. Now, is this a Savior we want to serve? Is this a Savior we want to love in return? Is this a Savior that we want to trust everything He says and follow the path that He has for us? And if it is, don't worry about the failures. Don't worry about the mistakes. Don't worry about the... Ugh! Remember His love. Remember His presence. Remember your salvation and your part in His plan. In Jesus' name, Amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Our gifts to our Lord are now received. Gracious Lord, according to your will and promise, you planned his path to the cross. He confronted the blindness of unbelief, the confusion of doubt, and the hurt of death. As we hear and contemplate the holy record of our Savior's passion and death, humble us as we view the Savior in His humility in His suffering show us our healing. And in His death, show us our life. Lord, remember us in Your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing, create in me.
given me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might serve you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might be renewed. Oh, fill me, fill me, bring me back to you, back to you. Fill me and heal me. Bring me back to you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might serve. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make His face shine on us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear Him. Amen. Well, this concludes our worship this evening. It was a pleasure to be here with you. And may the Lord bless your Lenten journey as we hear each step of Jesus' journey to the cross. And remember, He knows each step of our lives and loves us in all of them and walks with us in the midst of them. His peace be with you.